Hello YouTube. So, I'm sure um, I'm sure you don't know, but a few months ago I passed my Part 107 FAA drone test. Uh, it was surprisingly hard, and you know the whole time that I was studying with this, I, I studied online uh, with RemotePilot101.com. They're terrific, absolutely terrific. And I studied with them, and um, you know they, they break it down really well to where you know, you know what to expect. I guess is the right word to say. So, uh, you know, I've gone through all this information, and multiple times while I while I'm there uh, watching this stuff, the guy the guy says, you know. probably consider uh, becoming a pilot, a private pilot. So, you know, I think everybody deep down thinks it would be cool to be a pilot, It'd be neat. And, you know, I've always thought about that, but until I started learning this stuff for the drone tests, and I know drones and airplanes are completely different, I'm not making some sort of a misrepresentation here but the information on the drone test a whole lot of that stuff is pulled straight from the private pilot's test so when you think of it that way i know over half of the information that will be on the written test so why not get some time in and and go up in a plane and and take a few lessons and that's what i'm doing today that's where i'm going i'm so excited i can barely stand it uh so today will be my first time in an airplane and it will be my first private pilot's lesson so I'm really excited about that and and my wife is you know somewhat confused and bumfuzzled about how getting a commercial drone operator's license has led me to be a, to have this this want to become an airplane pilot and I'm just a I'm a really strange person. Things flow through me really fluidly and I get all these ideas and and I know a guy that's an instructor and one thing led to another and here we are. So I'm on my way there. I'm uh, going to be there in about an hour. So I'm going to a little regional airport. We're going to fly. I think it's a, I think it's a Cessna 172 that I'm going to get in. Uh, instructor's a great guy, Rick Cottle. I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm so terribly excited. Uh, like I said, my wife is, she's not against it at all. She wants me to do what I want to do and be happy, as long as it's reasonable. But she's worried. Uh, a lot of people worry about airplanes. I, I'm really not nervous whatsoever. I'm just, I'm super excited about the thoughts of this. And uh, back to the drone test, it, it is a difficult test. But I only say that in a means that you, you have to study for this test. It's not something that you're going to be able to just walk in off the street as a recreational drone pilot, sit down and be able to pass. You're not going to be able to do that. It goes over regulations. There's a lot of airspace questions, uh, coordinates, uh, sectional charts, what things mean on sectional charts, things like that. Don't, don't let it scare you by any means but you have to study for it there's a lot of free information online and i'm sure if you looked over that you could but i decided one day that i was going to take this uh, work offered me a little bit of a raise if i got it uh, because i could do some commercial work for for uh, the mine service company that i work for and uh, so i i decided to to go for it and they want to know when I could get it, and I said, I'm taking it in two weeks. And I made a deadline for myself, and I took it in two weeks, and I studied. A few days out of those two weeks, I watched the videos on remotepilot101.com. I went through all of them. The information's really there. There were maybe just a couple questions that were newer than the information in the videos, and that's expected. Uh, I just never saw the material. I made an 87, so that's pretty good. You have to have a 70 to pass. And the guy at the airport, again, uh, that was filling out my paperwork uh, at the airport in Sevierville, Tennessee, where I took the test, the guy
guy was filling out the paperwork. He said, well, you've done really good on this. He said, it, that's a good score. Uh, you should just go ahead and take the private pilot's written test. And so, you know, I get all these little bits of encouragement to go and do something that I wanted to do anyway, but I've just never done. So, uh, like I said, I've never been in an airplane before. I've never flown anywhere. I've been in a helicopter before, briefly. Uh, but I was young, and so this is going to be my first experience flying, period, whatsoever. And I'm partially going to be in control. It's my first lesson. I don't think I'm going to be doing a whole lot, but uh, I may. We'll see. Anyway, I'll catch you back afterwards. I'm going to try to film it, as long as uh, there's no problems with me breaking the GoPro with the plane. But.
out all the way down and the red switch up here. There you go. Wow. Well, are you disappointed in anything? I'm not at all disappointed. I'm disappointed in motion sickness. Well, you know, that happens to everybody. Uh, you know, if you get one of those absolutely smooth, calm days, you probably wouldn't even feel it. Right. Uh, and even this way, I know it'll be a little bit of work. But okay, so it was awesome. Uh, I've already come back from the airport and I, I went and got something to eat. Uh, I'm having trouble finding words. It was a, it was a really, really awesome experience, especially if you've never flown before like me. Uh, but at the same time, it was exactly what I expected. I really enjoyed myself. I, there's only a couple ways to say that, I guess, but I had a great time. Uh, I feel like for zero air time, zero airplane control time, I've watched a lot of YouTube. I'm a, I'm a YouTube pilot, I suppose, but it was exactly what I thought it would be. It handled the way I thought it would be. Uh, the only thing that I found exceptionally more difficult than you would imagine is taxiing on the ground. Uh, it's, it's pretty hard because your brain is not really wired that way. At least mine isn't. Uh, you know, you got to step on the right brake or the rudder according to how fast you're going. And that will turn the nose of the airplane to the right. It makes all kinds of sense in your head. But when you try to, for me anyway, when I try to translate that to my feet, it's different. Uh... And then it's at, there's a little bit of lag time in, in when it turns uh, because the, the front wheel, as the instructor was telling me, is the steering controls are attached by springs. And, you know, the spring has to stretch so far before it actually starts turning that front tire. So that's going to take some getting used to. And I, at a small airport, I only had, you know, just a little bit of of space that I had to had to taxi through. Uh, I took off, you know, and rotate. I had some easy pressure pulling back and and went on and uh, took off by myself. All that was really cool. Flew around for a long time. Uh, I started getting a little motion sickness, and that's something I I didn't expect. I didn't really expect it, but I didn't count it as not being possible either. Uh, you know, when I was when I was a little kid, I used to get motion sickness, and I remember more than once as a little bitty guy that when my older sister and brother would miss the bus, I would cry because I knew I was going to have to get in the car and take them to school with my mom, and that I would get sick. And, uh, you know, I'm much better, obviously, since then. But, at the same time, I've got to determine what to do about this. Because, you know, I don't want to be on a solo flight and get extremely nauseous. Uh, that's not something anybody, you don't want to get nauseous, period. But I sure don't want to be in the air by myself and, you know, and get sick. Because at any time... Um, with an instructor you just say the word and you know the plane's under control by someone else uh, I'm not extremely worried about that but at the same time that's the only part of today's experience that was bad uh, landed a little bit early uh, the instructor the instructor landed and uh, just a few minutes, I was fine, you know. Uh, I guess the, I guess what gets you mentally is the fear of having to vomit in, 
in an enclosed space with nothing to vomit in. Uh, so I've, I've got to I've got to see if there's something that can help me get through this easier. He said it was normal uh, that a lot of people he trains the first two or three times they'll get a little motion sickness and then they they get used to it and they go on. So uh, that's something that I'm gonna have to determine. Uh, I'm gonna start flying a little more and and see if it happens more and more and more. What I absolutely don't want is for something like that to keep me from pursuing this because I, I'm telling you, I really, really enjoyed myself as, you know, most people would expect. Uh, a whole lot of fun. It's a whole lot of fun. Uh, but first time I pulled back and, and we, we took off, it was just a feeling that I can't really explain, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, so I've got to determine if you know a little Dramamine or something like that would, would help me kick it. Uh, I saw the little patches you can wear behind your ear, but see, I don't want a permanent crutch either. I don't want to have to be on Dramamine every time I go fly. Uh, so I've got to got to figure something out. If anybody's got any ideas, please let me know. But anyway, this is my experience of my first time ever in an airplane period and also flying that airplane so yeah my first takeoff was in an airplane ever was me taking it off and I think that's pretty cool I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked about that but, uh, anyway the motion sickness if, if you guys have any any ideas or, or any any remedies or anything that, that you know of please let me know uh, other than that, I had an awesome day and hope you did too. Have a good one.